Yes, and also thank you, Marie, not only Salim, but also Marie for the great um, initial talk, and thank you, Jesse, for the invitation to be here. Um, so when in 1961 it became public knowledge in West Germany that the taking of the popular tranquilizer or soporific contagan caused severe fetal malformations, when images of babies born without limbs and uh, and on title pages of newspapers and of uh, women and families asking for medical explanation and, and help um, shocked the public, but also when popular campaigns drew the attention to the burden of the Kondagan children or um, sorrow children or problem children, as they were called, and uh, translation is somehow difficult, um, to raise money for their help, um, the risk for the unborn child fundamentally changed in West Germany. In the 1940s, women in National Socialist Germany had learned to fear inheritable diseases, Erbkrankheiten, as a social stigma and reason for radical discrimination, for forced abortion, um, for sterilization, forced sterilization, abortion, or killing. And in the post-war years, they learned from newspapers, medical encounters, and political debates about possible dangerous factors in the environment, as Salim has already raised. Kontagan, however, to the German society in 1961 came as a surprise, to the public at least, <laughs> in, to a country where the, that was the seat of the second largest pharmaceutical industry worldwide that had no coherent drug law and an industry-friendly government, I would say, a high authority of the medical profession. <coughs> and a drug that was really highly popular, and um, Grünenthal called it um, its, its a strongest child, actually, which is quite morbid for us, um, quite, quite a macabre um, um, term today, but uh, that's how it was called in the contemporary discourse. So in this talk, I will show how Kontagan, how the Kontagan shock drew the attention to the environmental risk for the unborn and examine then the shift from monitoring to the definition of risk factors in pregnancy and show that the transformation of mater maternal and fetal surveillance um, into a routine method soon focused on human genetic early detection. So a very similar conclusion to what Salim came for Great Britain. Um, with the involvement of uh, clinical genetics um, um, and, and statistical workers, most of all. Um, while external knocks, such as pharmaceuticals, attracted hardly any attention anymore. And the history of risk and pregnancy in West Germany, as I finally argue, as part of a larger cultural history of the family and of the child, can only be understood in depth if we look at the small-scale processes of decision-making and uh, that intertwined with changing notions of the child. And I will just show how activities and agendas of lobbying institutions um, transform abstract scientific data into practices of families, and thus shaped the bigger epistemological shift from the um, worries about the Contagan children to the management of so-called risk children, um, which proves, as I believe, a new perspective on the role of uh, an economic reasoning um, for the definition of risks and regulation in an increasingly charged welfare state. So exogen influences in, on the development of the child, as Salim said, were studied in Germany and worldwide since the early 20th century, but with some exceptions uh, regarded of minor importance. And the German common reference book for uh, medics, Pyramble, for example, in the early 1950s, doesn't mention any risk during pregnancy. But by the mid-50s, with the independence of the Federal Republic and the begin of the Cold War, um, with um, the rise of radioactivity in the air by nuclear tests um, was watched with concern. And similar to developments in the US and in the UK, uh, reports from Hiroshima and Nagasaki triggered um, research funding in the field of teratology, mutagenicity, but most of all clinical genetics after a period of science that followed 1945. Um, and at the same time, German medical experts um, were divided about the question over external or hereditary uh, factors for uh, fetal malformations. At the peak of a heated public and scientific debate around 1984 or uh, 58, the German Bundestag was asked for uh, an official statement. And after a year, it concluded 
that reasons and rates for malformations could not be explained on the basis of the present studies and statistical data, but that exogen factors seemed very unlikely. At about the same time, when the era of mass consumption started in Germany late, with a myriad of new products flooding the market and families' lives, politics slowly turned, as Alexander von Schwerin has shown in, in detail, um, from a technocratic to a more risk-centered regulatory approach. As more and more risks to future, future generations, this was the term that was used, were sus suspected everywhere, in clothes, in toys, body care products, and in the air, the German research foundation DFG established a number of Senate commissions, very similar to the working groups that Salim has described, as the core of the early West German regulatory politics. And two work groups are especially important and interesting for our, uh, us today, uh, one commission for teratological questions and one for questions of mutagenicity that tested all kinds of substances for a mutagenic aspect, um, but with a priority given to pesticides, not um, medication. After Vido Kindl Lenz, the famous human geneticist, at the conference of the Rhine Westphalian Pediatric Society in November 61, raised his suspicion that Contagan was the reason for the rise of similar malformations, but particular after when a year later self help organizations, um, um, after a period of silence, uh, were founded and demanded state help, state help and a debate about responsibility and um, drugs liability and dr drug side effects, the German Research Foundation was um, confronted with a request for a more active and targeted contributing to the making of policy and regulation recommendations. And it equipped its two commissions with two larger priority programs, with a 25 million mark in total between 1946 and 1980. Oh, I'm sorry, this was too quick. The first priority program um, closely monitored, monitored um, the course of the pregnancy and the development of the child of over 14,000 women and their children. Um, monitoring was not new at all and done by obstetricians and a gynecologist, um, Salim Shod, <laughs> again Salim Shod very well, um, for a long time. But what was new here was um, that obstetricians worked with pediatricians and, uh, and, and human geneticists and their work was linked by, statistic, by statistical workers. Um, so um, statistical data linked the, the data from gynecological and pediatric clinics to calculate exogen risk, risk factors. Um, for example, maternal living conditions, eating and drinking habits, socioeconomic factors, workload and medication, environmental factors, vitamin supply, illnesses and much more were all statistically related to the data of newborns, toddlers, but also of um, pathologi pathological examinations of fetuses and placentas. Classification systems were created and cytogenetic laboratories equipped in pediatric and gynecological clinics. And the final report um, that we see here, and it has a misleading date, it's 1983, but um, the, the first report was actually in 1971, and the second report was in 1977. This was just a very late um, um, additional volume. Um, I could not define, it, 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 was, it was in a sense um, um, uh, not a successful project because it could not define any teratological factors in environment that led to malformations. So it concluded um, that alcohol, cigarettes, and medication should in general be avoided during pregnancy, um, and monitor, monitoring should be expanded. The second program, built on the first, particular in terms of networks that were built and, and infrastructure that was built up and established, but it was explicitly determined to advance genetic early detection in the very moment when the Commission for Mutagenicity Questions came to the conclusion that it was too expensive and too difficult to test all the substances 
that uh, were present and the industry that produced every year so many new su uh, chemical substances uh, for the mutag mutagenic aspects. So this, as the statistics in the annual reports, we see the annual reports here, uh, show exogenous factors played a marginal role now, and in most cases, hereditary risks uh, led to prenatal diagnostics with advanced maternal age um, as by far the main um, indication followed by previous child with Down syndrome and chromosomal deviations. Quote, by the funding and development of diagnostic possibilities, it will be possible in families with known hereditary diseases to get healthy offspring, advertised the Research Foundation, its program. And the title page is visualized very well. The main target of the program, namely the fast expansion of a diagnostic and counseling dispositive at university clinics in private practices and um, in um, uh, and, and at university departments as an ever-growing area covering dispositive. So in other words, um, similar to what um, Salim concluded for the UK, uh, Contagan and uh, an awareness for environmental risks um, changed thinking about risks in pregnancy but enhanced, though not directly linked, the expansion of human genetic um, early detection to prevent the birth of children with hereditary diseases, whereas external factors again, played a marginal role in scientific debates. My last point. Um, so I think in order to understand um, better the contemporary historical panorama, it is important to note that, the, that this development that I, um, that I showed took place in a general phase of disorientation in Germany in times of a social and economic crisis when um, the stroke the West German society, when production rates fell, um, full employment ended, um, when the security model of the welfare state came into question and um, parallel um, to the introduction of amniocentesis in 1971, um, also an expected change of abortion law was discussed and a profound uh, change in the medical landscape took pla um, place in the form of a preventive term uh, that defined genetic diagnosis as a defensive measure, genetic counseling as a preventive procedure that were added to the insurance catalog just before in 1977 a cost dampering law was released <coughs> to further reduce the ever-rising welfare costs. So in this last section, I want to show um, that in order to understand the practical side of the shift from monitoring to early detection and uh, processes of decision-making that were linked, we need to look at the activities and agendas of lobbying associations. Um, I think more research is to be done in this area and um, to understand the distribution of authority between the different actors um, in full detail. But our first archival fi findings support the assumption um, that organizations such as the Foundation for the Disabled Child, founded in 1966 by human geneticists, um, and spokesmen of the pharmaceutical industry, but supported by high rank politicians such as the Ministry for Health, um, acted as mediators and important mediators between state, industry, science, and the public. They were involved, directly involved in political decision making by a modulation of interests in expert groups, in commissions of the DFG, assembly halls of ministries, and round tables. For example, one member, one very prominent member of the foundation, Horst Bickel, a pedi pediatrician, also speaker of the priority program, uh, prenatal diagnosis, publicly advertised the costs saved by early detection through amniocentesis, amniocentesis in relation to the cost of the care for patients with Down syndrome. And he was invited to give an expert opinion in the German Bundestag on these uh, calculations also in the context of the reform of the abortion paragraph. The foundation, on the other hand, transformed um, this knowledge and this reasoning to small-scale practical dimensions, to an array of techniques and approaches that were set up and maintained, like laboratories that were equipped with the money of the foundation, staff that was employed, employed um, counseling centers that were equipped, but also to the lives of families. Um, mail shots were sent out, um, counseling brochures like this one published, trainings for teachers and social workers provided, and TV advertisements produced. So steps that altogether had an, an enormous influence on um, 
personal decision making, um, the cultural climate and notions of pregnancy, the child uh, norm and disability. That's my conclusion already. So um, we looked at the early phase of a development of a human genetic um, and diagnostic dispositive and we looked at a phase that uh, in the re reorganization of knowledge in the second half of the 20th century that um, philosopher Josef Vogel has described as shaped by the new science of the event in the sense of a co-action of virtuality and actualization. Um, a time that the cultural historian Siegfried Mattel described as a phase of the expansion of the logic of auto-referential finance markets and the rehearsal in their new economy as a parallel de development to the rise of gambling. How does this help us? Um, I think that's a very important um, thought to help us understand the larger epistemological shift from the Kontagan Kinder in the early 1960s, and the shock about the Kontagankinder to the management of the risk children. Um, so while in the early 1960s the presence of the Kontagankinder had shocked the public and families in a phase when children in general and children and adults with disabilities in particular had a weak position in the early republic. Um, only in 1960 did compensation processes for disabled victims of NS euthanasia programs slowly begin, and parents were largely left alone with their worries and needs by the government. And in 1963, it caused only limited public outrage when a physician in Frankfurt administered a deathly syringe to a two and a half year old boy with malformations um, caused by a thalidomide at the behest of the boy's mother. Um, Two decades later, almost two decades later, at about the same time when Primados or Duogenon was finally taken from the market in Germany around 1980, um, counseling brochures such as, such as this from the Foundation for the Disabled Child explain Mendelian laws of inheritance at the example of the phenotype of fruit, at the example of grocery shopping. I enlarged the image in the upper le in the down left and an attention for economic principles. The German couple selects its apple well. And while uh, the search to protect the fetus from environmental dangers was, was, was stopped as too expensive, methodologically too, too complex and scattered, and um, at the other hand with unclear results, yet around 1971, the modern risk children, a term that became popular in the 1970s as a diagnosis and as a keyword in public discourse, to describe an unborn child that for different reasons meant a risk to parents and the society, could be prevent, prevented by the considerate reproductive decisions of the West German family. Thank you.